Now then, it's a kiln opening video. It is Monday the 30th of October 23 and I shut this kiln down on Friday about 6 o'clock in the evening. So it's had a good long time to cool down. Now we've got aeroplanes roaring in the background. Okay, they stopped roaring now, so let's carry on. Lift that off. Oh, okay. Right. That's another bowl. I like these. I think this is a refire. I think I didn't, um, or I've forgotten to glaze the bottom. So that's a refired bowl. I remember because these couple of little white marks. But that's good. There we go. And just a little dish. That's come out all right. That's like a plant pot dish or something like that. And this has come out all right. We have no time to stand and stare. Yeah, I'm reasonably pleased with that. I'm not quite sure what that is. But, hey-ho. Yeah, that's all right. There's a little bit of blue that's spread. But actually, that's more difficult than you think. Yeah. Put a coat of blue underglaze on there, let it dry and then wipe it off. Well, yeah, it's a fine balance between actually wiping it off in the letters and wiping it off the surface. But you can read that, so I'm happy with that. I think we'll just move these on. Okay, so I put a couple of, or a block, to support that mask. So let's just lift this out. All right, okay. We've got a large cup. There's a little bit of muck got in the bottom of there. But that's all right. That is really quite a nice largest coffee cup. And another bowl. Again, a little bit of dust got in that. And I cleaned everything, wiped all the uh, the bottoms of the or all of the kiln shelf off before I put it in place. But it just goes to show, yeah, things are against you all the time. And here's another tea coffee mug, slightly different, broader and narrower. Yeah, and that one is household clay and it seems to have fired all right. We're pleased enough with that. There wasn't so many items in this firing because um, these masks. Now that's a little bit, but I did it in white. I don't know whether you can read that or not. Time to sort the mouse droppings from the peppercorns. But it seems to have come out all right. And there's holes in the side here for hanging it up. And I did sort of just wipe a bit of the Tetford red or Tetford yellow um, 
slip down the side there so there is a slight difference in I should have perhaps blended it a bit more but like I did down the bottom here but you know what sometimes you just can't win and all you do every time it's an essay on how to do things everyone is a practice for you to move on So the masks do take the space of at least four, if not five, mugs. So you don't get that many bits in the kiln. Oh, okay. Yep. They're all different. Sort of tapered, a little bit thicker, trimmed on the bottom just so that the bottoms weren't too thick. But the white looks alright. I did actually fire this lot really quite slowly. Um, shorter. Uh, these were I think it took three hours to get about 120 degrees and the whole firing was quite gentle and it took 11 hours to get up to 1040 degrees because this is earthenware and I kept it at that temperature for 20 minutes just for the ceramic to catch up with the overall kiln air temperature if that makes any sense because obviously the air gets hotter quicker there we go there's another one that's all right quite like that one yeah And another one, slightly darker because this is on the bottom, it's a redder colour and it is home clay, yeah, quite happy with that. I have this feeling that it's important to let everything cool down very very slowly. So this is a um, oh a seventy odd hours worth of cooling. Yeah, a little bit thicker, which is not a problem because it's not that heavy. Yeah. Another bowl. That's a Tetford. Oh, maybe this is the one that um, I refired because I hadn't um, glazed the bottom. Yeah. If you take the if you take these things out too early, well, not when they're really cold, but um, when they haven't had time to sort of normalise, you can put them in the box and occasionally you hear them go tink, tink. But these actually feel really quite cold. So where are we? Can we see? This is a slump mould, two-sided. So there's two bits put together. Let me move that cup out of the way. And with a with a back foot on it. And I just wiped a bit of. Uh, Tetford and a bit of blue on there not quite sure how what I was doing there but I just wiped it on there and you can see the Tetford slip round here so I will mount this on a board 
piece of poplar or something like that. And the reason why I'll mount it on there, because you can imagine Joe Average goes in there and just whacks a screw in there really tight and just cracks it. So if you mount it on a board, then they haven't got that, um, that option of breaking the back by over tightening screws. Because, you know, to fit this, you could use wooden pegs and glue them in. So mount it on a board, drill a hole, just carve out a wooden peg and just glue it in place and that should hold it. Or put screws in, but don't tighten the screws very tight, just tighten them really, really just enough. Because although that back plate is pretty good, it's not perfectly straight. It's moved. But I'm reasonably pleased with this dragon. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. I'll get used to that. Yeah. It takes quite a while to make these because you roll out the clay. I've got two halves bits of plywood with this shape cut out of them so you can make a left and a right. Uh, and then you've got to leave that there for a day or two and then lift it out because obviously you've used a bit of cling film and you can almost see just there a couple of the, the wrinkles from the, kiln, the, the cling film. And you lift it out and then you've got to mould the two halves together. Which takes a while because it's got to be like the right moisture content so not too wet, not too dry. And then of course you cut the mouth out and bore the hole through the nostrils and cut the eye out and everything. And what I tend to do is make a tenon on the back of these two halves that come together and then make this plate and cut a slot in it fit it together and mould it over so quite a lot of time made for making that right there you go comments please uh, this you know, making using your own clay that you've dug gives certain challenges but it really means that you can just make stuff and you're not worried about the cost or the uh, the impact of buying in bags and bags of clay. But this Tetford is a uh, stoneware clay. It will go up to stoneware temperature of like 1220 or 1230. Whereas the household clay, that's a Tetford, that's a household. That one won't stand... Uh, 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 stoneware temperatures it's an earthenware clay uh, if you go uh, into the 1100s this starts to sort of melt and go very grey and overburn effectively catch up with you soon cheers for now